This channel has just reached 10,000 subscribers, and I am truly grateful for everyone who decided to subscribe. In reaching this milestone, it is only fitting that I talk about something related to the number 10,000, which is where this video comes in. There are many long-lived organisms that exist on Earth, from 200-year-old tortoises to 2,000-year-old sponges. Plants, in this case trees, take their longevity to the next level, and in some cases have been known to reach well over 10,000 years of age, and are themselves remarkable examples of biology in their own right. There are a great many examples of long-living trees, so I hope you enjoy learning about this topic. The trees that inspired the creation of this video, that being a stand of Lagarostrobos franklini, or Huon pines in Tasmania, have been noted to individually reach prodigious ages, often in excess of 2,000 years, the oldest tree dated at over 3,000 years of age. To explain why this is, and how they live for such a long time, we need to first take a look into the processes of how this stand and others like it came to be. Plants like the Huon Pine are able to reproduce vegetatively through a remarkable process known as vegetative propagation or vegetative cloning. This is a form of asexual reproduction in which a new plant is able to grow from a fragment of the parent plant or through a specialised reproductive structure. This process is usually considered to be a cloning method as it has been noted that all of the individuals of the Huon Pine stand are male, as well as all being practically identical genetically. Vegetative reproduction has its advantages due to this, as the parents of the produced offspring are able to pass on their genes to their identical offspring, which inherit the parents' favourable traits if they have any, meaning that they can then pass down its advantageous genetic information to its offspring, guaranteed. This propagation also allows the plants to circumvent the immature and vulnerable seeding phase, allowing the trees to mature quicker than they normally would through this process. Vegetative reproduction does have its disadvantages however, and no doubt through something that is blatantly apparent, that's being the complete lack of any sort of genetic diversity. This is due to all of the plants being identical, both phenotypically and genetically, and are all, therefore, susceptible to the same strains of plant viruses and bacteria, as well as any climatic changes that could arise. This hasn't stopped these clonal organisms from being successful, however, and some of these plants have been able to survive for even longer. A great example of this is the extraordinary colony of male quaking aspen, known as Pando, or the Trembling Giant. This clonal organism, located in the Fish Lake National Park in central Utah, occupies 43 hectares of land and is estimated to weigh a collective 6,000 tonnes, making it to the heaviest known organism, more than 48 times larger than the average blue whale. Pando came to be via a process known as suckering, in which the original stem sends out lateral roots, that under the right conditions then send up other erect stems, which is continually repeated until a whole stand of individual trees is eventually formed. Unfortunately for Pando, the organism is currently thought to be dying. The reason for this is likely through a combination of factors, including drought and overgrazing. This latter factor is down to human interference, as a study published in October of 2018 found that people allowed cattle and deer populations to thrive, which with the lack of predators in the region, began to eat away at all of the young saplings, eliminating them and leaving the older, dying trees behind. Thankfully, conservation efforts have been implemented to preserve Pando, with fences being erected to keep animals away from new sprouts, as well as some shrubs and bushes being cut back in order to encourage new growth. The conservation of these long-lived organisms should most definitely be maintained in order to be viewed and appreciated for years to come, and hopefully these remarkable plants remain as icons of the natural world for future generations. I hope you enjoyed this video, and once again, I thank you all in reaching 10,000 subscribers. It really is incredible that this community that has been built up over the months has amounted into what the channel is today, and I am forever grateful for that. A big thanks most definitely has to go to the other science-based YouTubers that I've collaborated with over the course of the year, 
and over time, the community I was once just an observer over has grown in ways I never thought possible and has become more connected than ever before. In terms of the future of the channel, I hope to most definitely make more paleontology and zoology videos, delving into the weird and wonderful animals of the past as well as in the present day, and I already have a lot of video ideas on topics I wish to cover. And if any of you have any suggestions on topics you want me to talk about, be sure to leave them in the comments. And with that, I thank you for watching, and for 10,000 subscribers. See you later!